Don't worry to get into trouble. That's good news. Adventure flying will force you to push your own limits and become a better pilot. Hi guys, my name is Miroslav and I'm super excited to start a brand new video series. It's called Paramotor Adventure Stories. It is a complete guide to paramotor adventure flying. We have a full list of chapters that we want to cover all aspects of adventure flying with paramotors because I truly believe adventure flying is the future of this sport. And to make it super exciting in this series, we will use real life examples, real life stories of, of uh, myself or my friends as we did adventure flying in the past and what we have learned. So for you, when you commit uh, and decide to do your own adventures or with your paramotors, it will be a lot easier because, well, you can learn from my mistakes or our mistakes. So, the first story, flying into the unknown. It was last year on our trip around Slovakia. We had some guests and uh, we took off in the Low Tatra Mountains, flying all along, and Roberto Pozo, a pilot from Bolivia, he asked me in the radio, hey Miro, where are we gonna land? And I said, I don't know. And Roberto being an airline pilot, you know, he's used to have everything scheduled to know exactly where to fly, which direction, what minute basically he will be in each waypoint and, and double checking its time of arrival and landing with minute precision. And he suddenly, he was exposed to the uncertainty that just flying in the unknown terrain following me as a guide without knowing how far we go and where we're gonna land and how it's gonna look there. And he was actually pretty surprised that even I didn't know. And this story is kind of a definition of adventure flying. Flying into the unknown, just take off, double check everything you can, but there will be still plenty of things that you can't check and you don't know. And you just need to commit yourself and, and fly and see how it turns out. So this uncertainty makes flying to adventure flying, and this makes it so exciting. Story number two, least suitable means of transportation. So this is a photo taken during my Icarus Trophy adventure three years ago. It's an amazing adventure where we, super simple, take off close to the Canadian border in Montana and flying unsupported on my own all the way through Monument Valley and finishing very close to Las Vegas. So it was 1,900 kilometers unsupported, took me eight or nine days. And uh, years after, I had Simon Walker for a visit here in Comarno. And Simon Walker is a board member of uh, Adventurous, so that's the company that organizes this race and many others. And by the way, he's also managing director at Perjet. And Simon is a super nice guy. So he said one quote that I remember. He said that for all these adventures they organize, not just paramotor related, they have a one thing in common. They use the least suitable means of transportation. And it may sound tricky, but actually, yeah, the paramotors are vulnerable to weather. You may break something, something may eventually break on the motor, or you may have an accident on takeoff, landing, whatever. So truly, paramotors are probably not the ideal means of transportation if you want to cover long distances and with any weather, but they are vulnerable. And being exposed to all the potential trouble will get you down on the ground, need to be in touch with the local people, ask for help and solve problems. And these problems are very, very core part of the whole adventure and will make it to remember for the rest of your life. So the final lesson learned from this story is don't worry to get into trouble. That's good news. Story number three, slalom between rain cells in Iceland. This photo was taken by Ryan Southwell in Iceland this summer. Uh, this is me actually, right up on the top. So we were flying to this very, very remote place called Lucky Craters. It takes like 12 hours to get there with a special expedition vehicle. And it took us probably 40 minutes to get to fly there. Now, what you see on the right is rain cell. So it was a rain cell here, rain here, as we eventually continued over this line of craters 
we had to stop because there was rain in front of us. There was rain everywhere. And what we actually learned, given certain circumstances, it's okay to fly in the rain. And this photo represents another main characteristics of adventure flying, how much you learn. I would never learn how to fly in rain because back home I would never, I would, wouldn't even consider to take off. I would stay at home because, okay, it's rain today, so I'm gonna fly tomorrow. But once you are in such an amazing environment and landscape as Iceland, you don't want to miss that flight just because it's a little bit drizzling. So you commit yourself to fly in conditions and circumstances that you wouldn't back home. And this actually pushes your limits to learn more. And so lesson learned from this story Adventure flying will force you to push your own limits and become a better pilot. I would use these three stories to summarize a very short kind of a Twitter definition of adventure flying. Flying to the unknown, get into trouble and learn from it to become a better pilot and a stronger person. And this is why I love uh, adventure flying so much. Story number four today, how I got into adventure flying. So basically, I'm the unlucky one to be born in the 20% of Slovakia that's completely flat. Slovakia is mostly mountainous, here's straight line horizon. Starting to Paramore, it was great fun for, for a year or two, but then, you know, I've seen everything and the horizon looks the same any direction. So I started to get into slalom racing. I did slalom racing for a season two. I was never a Top Gun, but not pretty talented. But then I realized that slalom, that I have too many kids to do slalom racing, flying 80 kilometers a meter over the ground and pushing it hard. I tried acrobatics once, scares the shit out of me, and I realized acrobatics is not for me. And then one day I strapped a sleeping bag to my paramotor, gone from home, flew all around Slovakia, and returned from the other direction six days later. And this adventure, flying unsupported, that was a game changer. And I got addicted to adventure flying for, for lifelong. And, and you see all these photos on the walls that uh, this is something that I live with. So since then, I did the Icarus Trophy race. I uh, did a lot of bivouac flying. For the last three seasons, we organized trips to all places. And I truly believe that adventure flying is an unlimited source of inspiration and challenges. Now, this is why we do these video series, to inspire you guys to fly out of the box and just not fly all the take off at the same spot and landing on the same spot every time but actually go and explore the world and uh, you can do it in a much easier way you can learn from my mistakes and mistakes from my friends that we will have as guest speakers in this video series and this way you can do progress a lot faster now the good news for you you don't need to start the hard way as I did you can learn from my mistakes and the mistakes of our guest speakers that we will have during shooting this video series. And I have a whole list of chapters that I want to cover, pretty much going through planning your trip, improvising. Yeah, that's a huge, huge, huge section on improvising during the trips because this is this is the fun part. What gear to take, uh, what's the best gear for adventure flying in terms of gliders, paramotors, all other equipment, how to carry that gear, how to pack it, what camping gear you need and so on. And emergency situations and critical situations, dangers and risks. And the last section would be how to share your adventure with others. Guys, I will put this list of chapters into the description below. And I would really appreciate if you have some suggestions, just leave a comment or send me an email that, hey, you know, how about covering this and this in one of the series. I'm super excited about this series. We have already recorded about 17 chapters with Jean-Francois, an amazing adventure pilot, flying 6,000 miles on his paramotor in one session. Uh, Ryan Southwell, one of the best paramotor videographers in the world. No, he is the best videographer in the world. I'll put in the link to his videos in the description. Go and watch them. Also, Shane Denherder, Tucker God, I'm sure you know him. We have interesting guests. We have great great stories that you can learn from so hit the subscribe button please share with your friends and comment if there is something that you need to know thank you very much this video series is brought to you by adventurewingman.org adventure wingman is a non-profit fund providing direct financial support to paramotor adventures anyone can apply 
even you, and we would cover up to 50% of the direct costs of the adventure. We want to inspire pilots and the paramotor community to do adventures, to fly some really exotic places, and the only condition is that you're gonna share with us so you can inspire others. So if you're committed to your adventure and already have a rough plan, go to adventuremingman.org, submit your application, and your adventure might be selected for support as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next chapter. Ciao.